welcome to this lecture on cryptology. Cryptology consists of two things, cryptography, the writing of codes, and cryptoanalysis, which is the decryption or reading of codes. So today I want to introduce 10 crypto systems, mostly ordered historically. For me, cryptology always has been exciting, especially after I had a chance in military to uh, join the cryptology group, which was uh, for, for Swiss, it's you know mandatory to go to military. And after uh, shooting a lot of uh, 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 artillery bullets, I could join the cryptology group and we were in the most beautiful places in Switzerland and we could do mathematics, we could do factoring integers, we could do learn algebraic geometry, we could program, it was uh, fantastic. The first crypto system we are going to look at is the Polybius cipher. So one possibility is to write just the alphabet down in a square. So here we have just I and J identified so that we have 25 letters. This is a uh, one case and then you can uh, replace every letter you can replace with a number for example b would be uh, 12 1 2 and so on so here is another example of such a, a cipher it's a different one it's called the masonic cipher it's also used in games like escape rooms and uh, for example the a would just be like this so you would just write a as this so you replace just the alphabet with something geometric which you can uh, write down without actually memorizing it. These symbols can be, or these squares can be written down pretty quickly. The second cipher we are going to look at, this is physically scrambling things around. So uh, it's called Skittily. So Skittily, I have brought the Skittily here. So what you usually have, you travel around with a kind of this, maybe this is your belt and this is a stick so if you put that stick if you put that wind that around the stick what you get is then the physical you can read off the, the, the word of course you have to know the size of the stick so that was used already by the by the by the by the roman side 700 bc i think is the first documentation and you can see in this case it says harvard university <clears throat> so that's a kind of a uh, what what happens is you can also do like the Romans have done. You can write down uh, your sentence in a square and then you just read it the opposite way. So I, I have written here Harvard University. There's no T here so that I have 16 letters and then you read it the opposite way. So this is scrambling. Scrambling like uh, when you shred a paper, you essentially do that. Cipher number three is the Caesar cipher. It's uh, also a cipher which is often used by kids, especially there are uh, a famous one is rock 13. You just rotate the alphabet around and the A becomes the, the A becomes the X, the B becomes the Y. That's what Caesar has, uh, has done. Uh, other, there have been other systems. Rot 13 rotates by 13 so that if you rotate twice, you get back. Uh, there is also Altbash is just reversing things. A becomes C, B becomes uh, Y, and so on. So that's also involutive. And so this is a substitution cipher. These are very weak crypto systems. They can be cracked by frequency analysis very, 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 very efficiently. <clears throat> cipher number four is a sophi more sophisticated version of the substitution cipher. What you do is you have different it's called polyalphabetic because you have different such substitution and you are changing them periodically. So in the case, in the simplest case, like uh, Trithemius has uh, in, in 1508 described the first time such a thing. So you use for the first letter, you use the first, for the second letter, the third, for the third letter, the, and so on. So what you are using, you are using different, different substitution and that changes the the, the frequency, so it's no more so easy to crack. A more sophisticated version is the Vigenaire cipher. It has been uh, developed by Bel Bellazzo, but it's a, a polyalphabetic cipher where you have also a keyword additionally. For example, you have a key like ADB, and then you use first this, then you use this alphabet substitution, and then you use this uh, substitution. 
So that's more sophisticated. So people have devised uh, kind of tools to make this more efficient, like something like that, where you can just use different different alphabets. <clears throat> systems and polyalphabetic systems can be done with more sophisticated cryptoanalysis, uh, especially what happens because the code word is finite, that the frequency actually is just you know, comes in, in blocks. So you have just, if you have a little bit longer text, you can still, you can still do that. <clears throat> By the way, these were all, 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 all systems we were taught in, uh, uh, in military. There was a great, there were, there were great textbooks. Unfortunately, I don't have any of these textbooks because we had to uh, give them back and also not, nothing written down. We had to burn everything after our, uh, our service. So, uh, but we, we, it was a lot of fun to learn this, and then especially the, the, the newer systems, which we are going to look at. <clears throat> Ottendorf cipher, it's probably the cipher which appeared in most movies. It's uh, 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 Arnold cipher is, a, is an example which uh, happened, it, it, was, it was also used during the, the Civil War. So you take a text, you take a book, like you take some famous book, like this would be a book which is a, a standard. This is a Riesel's book which, which we have used. That was our Bible in our crypt cryptology military service. And uh, but this is already edition two, so you have to make sure you have the right edition. If you use the Bible, you have to write the right edition of the Bible or whatever you are using, what text you are using. So famous is this Arnold cipher because uh, I think that's kind of one of the first documented things. It was the commentaries of the law of England were used. And what you do is you, you have uh, triples of numbers. So the first number is the page number. So if you would look at here, so in this case, you would look, look at number, uh, page number 120. Then you would look at the ninth, ninth line, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you would look at the seventh word, which is two, four, six, seven, we have been been, if you would, would use this, this book. So it encodes uh, words in a, in a text which, which everybody has uh, access to. So this is also called a book cipher. That's the it's an Ottendorf cipher. cipher. That's right. Ah, oh, okay. The next, the next cipher is the, I, I would love to have an Enigma machine, I don't have one, but it's based on a rotor mechanic. So I have here just a kind of a, a caricature, of course that's not that's not what the Enigma is, but what you have is you have rotors and then you turn and what happens is every, in every, these are, these are substitutions and every, in every letter you are using, you change the whole substitution. So it's a polyalphabetic cipher where the change of the, where the change here of the, of the alphabet is, is done in a very complicated way. And then additionally, there is also scrambling around. So there is also a physical board where you do a Caesar cipher additionally with permutations, arbitrary permit and arbitrary permutation additionally. So, so here the frequency analysis is much more difficult, and uh, this is uh, uh, also in movies uh, very well uh, explained. It was played an important role in the Second World War. <coughs> so that's the Enigma machine. <coughs> Mathematically very exciting is the uh, number eight, which is the RSA public crypto system. We will look at that in more detail in class based on mathematics. So what happens, it's all based on modular arithmetic and, and public, publicly accessible uh, keys. So n is equal to pq is public, but the p and the q are not known. So this is a this is, a, this is based on the difficulty of factoring large integers. If you have a 500 digit integer, then uh, this is uh, with current technology, not, you cannot factor it. These are 250 50, uh, uh, digit primes. And then uh, you also use a, 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 a public A, and then you can build X to the A. And uh, if you, you send Y, and an adversary who uh, listens to it cannot, cannot from, from Y cannot find X. This is based on the discrete log. The difficulty is also kind of based on the discrete log. And uh, so if you know the factorization, it's easy to recover the, the text because then you can find a B 
such that y to the b is again the, the, the clear text. This is based on Fermat's theorem or Euler's version of Fermat's, Fermat's theorem. <clears throat> Number nine is the Diffie-Hellman key ex exchange system. Uh, it has been done, found by uh, Wittfried Diffie and Martin Hellman, but actually before already by the British uh, service, the Bonds have already found, uh, found that a little bit early in 1969, but they could not publish it. And it's based on the uh, discrete log. What you can do is without that the uh, adversary knows, you can find a common keyword. So you can agree on a common keyword by publishing A and P, and then uh, you kind of, you, you choose, a, you choose a, 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 a X and form A to the X model of P. That's what you send over a public channel to, the, to, your, to your friend, and uh, your friend sends you A to, the, A to the Y, also with a randomly chosen Y. Now, both of you can compute the, the, the common key, X to the Y and Y to the X. This is the same by the laws of exponentiation, but it's hard to figure out uh, what, from x, it's hard to figure out what is, what, is the, what is a small x. That's a discrete log problem. Essentially what happens in the discrete is that the exponentiation essentially scrambles around equivalence classes of numbers. And finally, uh, I want to mention the data encryption standard, uh, which is kind of a, a little bit an ugly, from a mathematical point of view, a little bit an ugly system because it's quite arbitrary you have a relatively large key and you scramble things you take a block of text you scramble it with the key and you use kind of kind of discrete dynamical systems which are in the continuum chaotic so you kind of assume that they are also pretty randomly scrambling things around in the in the discrete but uh, but they were actually Hacked. I mean, you can you can you can uh, nowadays with, uh, with with good computing power, you can solve solve this, read this uh, codes. One should also maybe mention other systems. There is also quantum cryptology, but that's a completely uh, different field. It's based also on physics, but it's very exciting also in the context here because one doesn't know whether uh, quantum computers might be able to to uh, compute these things faster. There's an algorithm of Shor which shows in principle that's possible, but one doesn't know whether one can really build these quantum computers which are more ef effective than the, than the real computers. <clears throat> so that's it uh, for today. <clears throat>